in the alpha scattering experiment, we had seen that when an alpha particle from a radioactive source, a positively charged alpha particle, when passed through a gold foil, as per the classical theory, which was plum pudding model, the expectations were that the alpha particle shouldn't deviate more. Most of the alpha particles or all the alpha particles should have a very slight deviations and all of them should behave in the same pattern. But the results were different. If you can see the second diagram, the deviations, majority of the alpha particles went undeviated. Some of the alpha particles deviated through a very small angle, probably lesser than 10 degrees. And very, very few alpha particles were backscattered through an angle which is greater than 90 degrees, sometimes even 182. So this gave the conclusion that atom is almost empty and there is a small concentrated positively charged nucleus with a very small density, which is at the center. So it is highly positive and occupying a very small space in comparison to the size of an atom. Now let's understand various background information to study mm -hmm. further. If we can look at this animation, when the positively charged alpha particle is bombarded to a positively charged gold nucleus, this is what was seen. The alpha particles came a distance closer to the nucleus and after that, it stopped for a while and retraced its path. It went back along the same path, just like repulsion. What is this distance? This distance that the alpha particle has come closer to the nucleus is called as the distance of closest approach. So let's define distance of closest approach. Distance of closest approach is the distance between any two charged particles, like alpha particles and the gold nucleus in this term. So the alpha particles come a distance closer, not more than the distance of closest approach, and after that, it goes back. So this plays a very critical parameter to understand various spatial aspects in atomic and subatomic interactions. So if you can look at the setup here, when an alpha particle is moving, moving alpha particles will have maximum kinetic energy. And as it comes closer to the nucleus, it becomes slower and slower and it reaches a point where it stops moving. That's when it has highest potential energy. So you can see the law of conservation of energy. The entire kinetic energy of the moving alpha particle is getting converted to maximum potential energy at the point of closest approach. Using the law of conservation of energy, the initial kinetic energy of alpha particles is basically based on its mass and velocity. The initial potential energy is on account of its charge and configuration and its position, how far it is away from the nucleus. Final kinetic energy is after the interaction with the nucleus as it reaches the distance of closest approach. At the point closest to the nucleus, after the interaction, what is the change in its velocity? And that will account for the final kinetic energy. In the similar way, what is the change in the final potential energy because of the change in the position and configuration with respect to the nucleus? Mm -hmm. So as we can see here, when an alpha particle comes closer to the nucleus, the entire energy initially is only kinetic energy. But once it comes closer to the nucleus, at the point where it has just stopped, has reached the nucleus and it is stopping at that position, the entire energy is only the electrostatic potential energy, which is the electrical potential energy, which is KQQ over R, where capital Q is the charge of the nucleus 
and small q is the charge of the alpha particles. So if you can see here, if you know the proton number of a nucleus, if there are z protons in a gold nucleus and the charge of each proton is plus e, then the total charge of the nucleus is proton number times the charge. While helium nucleus has two protons, so it has a charge plus two e. So if you substitute all of the equations in the electrical potential energy equation, we have that ZE is the charge of capital Q, 2E is the charge of small q. So we have the equation 2ZKE square over R0 or R, which is the distance of closest approach. Now this gives you an important relation that energy and the radius of an atom is inversely related. Very important part. As the radius increases, the energy of alpha particles reduces. So can we tell that the you know, atoms which are extremely small with a smaller nucleon number, with a smaller radius, will have a high energy of particles. It will have, it will be highly energetic. So now if we can substitute the values, like K is the Coulomb's constant, Z is the number of protons, which is 79 for the Coulomb nucleus. E is charge of a proton, which is 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 and square of that. If you substitute the energy of alpha particle as a certain value, which is 7.68 mega electron volts, again, electron volts come converted to joules, so you time it with 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19. Substituting all the values, we get the radius of the nucleus is 3 into 10 to the power minus 15 meters. Now, is this Now, this is nothing but the radius of the cold atom, which is 3 into 10 to the power minus 14 meters. 